Hi, Gary at ATVTracks.net with my brother Steve, my lead tech, Willie, main salesman, and Nate. Uh, our latest project here was designing a long bolt and short bolt system that's a lot stronger than the factory one and a longer, uh, stronger torsion arm. Um, we will show you how to adjust it, we will show you how to install it, and we'll show you why they work better than the factory ones. This is the new rear system that we have designed with three quarter inch rod, all the nuts and bolts, extra strong tire right in, half inch uh, long bolt system. We also give you an extra short spacer and four other spacers so you can adjust the leverage and the angle of attack on all the vehicles. Uh, very, very strong system. Okay, this is the front torsion arm, three quarter inch uh, uh, rod, basically all the nuts and bolts and uh, actually a uh, optional steering limiter if you want. Comes with the tire rod end bolt which is uh, what's called the long bolt system which is half inch instead of 10 millimeter. Um, this is for the front, it fits 90% of all the ATVs and, and probably 100% of all the UTVs on the front only. Now we're going to go over the device here. We're going to show you the difference between the Camsol light duty and ATVTracks.net heavy duty torsion arms. Okay, so this here is the standard um, anti rotation rod for the Camsol. It has a 10 millimeter tie rod end. And a lot of adjustments, this, the weak point is this tie rod end is very, very long. So if I put this in a vise, and this is supposed to hold a UTV, but I put this in a vise, you can see I can bend this so easy, and I'm not near the weight of a UTV. Now, if your system requires this long of a tie rod end, you're definitely going to bend them. And after you bend them two or three times, it's going to break. This is the same rod, but it's a little shorter, okay? But we still have the issue that it takes a little more power, I can still bend it pretty easy. You know, the, it's bending pretty easy. Now, we're going to go into mine. Three quarter inch pipe, not even grade eight, I can make it stronger. Uh, one inch, very thick tie rod end. I'm going to put this in here. And I'm going to, I'm going to try to can't bend it at 250 pounds. It, <coughs> it won't bend. The only disadvantage of this is if you do something and get stuck on a stump or something and hit it at 30 miles an hour, you're either going to break the bracket on the machine or the bracket on the track. So common sense goes a long ways. Okay, this is the stock one that was actually adjusted by us to two specs, which is no pressure under rubber. What we're going to do is we're going to replace this one with the um, aftermarket one. So basically, I'm going to take the factory one off that's already been adjusted. And it's best to just take it all off in one piece. This is, is normally done on the ground, but for easier video, I do it up here. Can you lift up the back of that so I can pull this out, Steve? There we go. Okay, so now I've got the tie rod in, the torsion arm out. I'm going to go to the bench and I'm going to pre-adjust the new one. Okay, normally, I've already done the other side so that I know there's an issue with this here. Normally, I would measure from the center of this tie rod in to the center of this here, and I would write that measurement down and I would pre-adjust it. But we have an issue with this um, system since this is quite a bit longer than this here that I don't have enough room. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on the machine and show you a few issues that we have. First of all, we're going to use the same rubbers, we're going to use the same bracket, and we're going to use the same spring. So I know this is going to be a, a, a problem, but I'm going to show you how we take care of it. Normally what you would do is you would take your two rubbers, stick on, they slide on your stock rubbers, slide on your stock bushing, you're going to throw your spring on, and then you're going to give, put your uh, nylock on. Now, we're not adjusted, but we're ready. 
Now we'll go back to the vehicle. Okay, so this is the 10 millimeter bolt that we're gonna take out, which is factory. Whoops. Okay. Take out with the bushings. Now, to save time, we've already re-drilled this hole to half inch. So now we're gonna take our new one. And it's very important on the new one. These are special washers. They have to be on each side of the tie rod end. So we're going to run this bolt through the back and turn it to where it countersinks in. Okay. On most of them where the, uh, the bolt hangs down, you'll use the spacer, a washer, the tie rod in, another spacer, a uh, washer, a spacer, another washer, and a nut, okay? Now, this here was pretty well level before, so if you notice when I put this up here, this, this rubber is supposed to basically um, just be touching that or have a little bit of pressure. As you can see, I'm off an inch. So what I had to do on this one here is I had to take these two nuts off. So we're going to do that right now. Oops. I got it. And normally it's, it's, it's tied on there. This is pretty little different on this uh, Can-Am. And we're just going to put the thin one on because we didn't have enough room. On most of them, this is not an issue, but this is how adjustable it is. So the thin one goes on, the tie rod goes on, and we're going to go all the way. Now, if you're a little short, you can actually, you don't have to go all the way. You can only go in halfway. So now we're going to put this on. Okay. So we got washer, spacer, washer, nut. Now, if you'll notice here, we're pretty close to where we need to be, um, especially if I get in there. So I'm going to lift this up, and he's going to slide it in, and I'll show you another problem okay. that we have. This is just on the commander, but I'll show you how we fixed it. Ready? Okay. Okay. You can see the problem here is this is pointed on a strange angle. It's going way inside. So to take care of this problem, what we did is take this out again. Okay. We're going to take this off, and I'm going to put two small spacers on the back side. You got the space. Okay, so we're taking the long bolt out, we're putting in a half inch shorter, and we could actually go another half inch, but uh, if there's an issue, cut the end off. And you gotta turn it to make sure it fits inside there. Two washers for the spacers. Tie rod in in. One more washer. Short spacer. Washer and nut. Now you'll see the difference here when we put this on. Now it's in a pretty well straight line. Before with that big spacer it was pointed in this way. So you can adjust whichever angle you want to put this on. But this is, this is perfect right here. So now we're going to put it back together. Oh, Is there and we tighten everything or not yet? Should probably take that, put a short spacer on that top one. Now we're going to tighten that one. We're going to tighten the tie rod in. Now we're doing this up in the air. 
You could do most of this up in the air. We're going to drop it down to the ground and do the final adjustment on it, just so you understand how it works. Okay, these bolts now go inside here, and you got to kind of work it around to fit it. And sometimes they don't fit all the way in because there's a small burr inside here. So when you tighten this, make sure it's in there and tighten it really good. It's a grade 10 bolt and it's not gonna break. That way you'll pull it inside. Now we've got a loose spring, which is what we want for the adjustment. Now we're gonna pretend you've done, you've done this all on the ground. We're gonna drop it on the ground and explain how to adjust the tension on this. Now if you watch us lower it here, we put it on cardboard. You're gonna see the cardboard move just a little bit. If it's on cement, it won't move, so you won't get a true accurate reading. You want the track to slide as your suspension goes down. So we're gonna put it on there, and that, that cardboard should move. It'll move in or out just a little bit. See, the, there it goes, there it goes. See, if you were on cement, it wouldn't move at all, and then everything's not really correct. So now what I'm gonna do is jump on it a little bit. Make sure it's down. Now we'll go inside, and I'll show you how we need to adjust it. Okay, so now on this one here, since the rubber still turns, and that's good, we could have a little more pressure. I could actually put two nuts on there, but it's nothing to worry about. The main thing is, uh, this is close. The main thing is this nut needs to be tightened now. Otherwise, when you do the turning, it turns the whole. So it's locked now, and I can turn it. And it's okay if you make this rubber a little tighter. Now, as you see, the spring is loose. Now, I need to move it forward. I have you, uh, I'm going to move it forward until I take up the space. See, I'm still turning it. I want a little bit of friction. And as you do this, you're slowly going to compress the rubber. That's nothing to worry about. We're going to do it until there's no gap. It's still a little loose. A little loose. Okay, we're tight. And this isn't that critical, but now that we've got it against the spring here, okay, um, now I'm going to give it three turns. So I, I figure three of these, so I'm going to do nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The spring still turns, but I got pressure on it. If you don't want it to go up so high, you can give it a little bit more. Now that you're done with that, then you tighten these top and bottom bolts. Okay, so she's adjusted. Now I'll lift it back up, and this rear is done, and we'll show you how to do the front. Uh, stays pretty level. So basically, we've reinforced the rod quite a bit. We've reinforced the, the what they call the long bolt on the rear. So you can still ruin things. If you back up and push this down, and then you compress the rubber so much, and you keep going underneath the 10-foot log, you're either going to pull this out or pull that out. That's not driving the cord to manufacturer's specifications. If you go up too high, and you compress the spring all the way, something's got to give. So either this is going to give, or the, the uh, fixation plate. But with common sense, you'll never have to buy another short uh, long bolt, short long bolt kit or lower torsion arm. So now we're going to do the front end here, and we're going to show you how to pre-adjust it on the front. Uh, this one was a little bit easier, but as you can see, this is a long uh, uh, tie rod in there. This is going to bend very easy if you go up too steep a step. So we're going to take it off, and we're going to show you how to install the new one. Now, to speed things up, we've already drilled the half inch hole and we're going to take the bracket off and put the new bolt in. Okay, just let it go out. So this is our custom one, this is the factory one. You can see the long part that bends a lot. So what we're going to do now is we're going to measure from the center of this hole to this edge right here, eight inches, okay? Just remember, eight inches. Now, I also supply a uh, 
angle iron in case you want to put your steering limiters on. If you're the only driver and you're an experienced driver, you don't need these. But if you have people that don't understand that you cannot turn a four foot track and expect it to go 90 degrees left, you better put those on, otherwise they'll ruin stuff. So now we're gonna take this apart and we're gonna preset this for eight inches between the eyelet and this part here. Okay. So now we're gonna take this off. One rubber. I don't use these. So you get it with the kit if you want to use it, good for you. Now, we know it was eight inches between there and there. So I got to go all the way down here. So I'm just going to move this down. And this is a preliminary, so you don't have to sit there all day to do it. So there's eight inches right there. This is the lock nut. I wouldn't lock it yet because we're going to do a final adjustment to confirm everything's right. Um, this is already tight. We're going to put the spring on and this here on. Just make sure the spring is loose. Okay, now we're going to take my half inch bolt off. We're going to take the 10 millimeter out from the factory. We've already pre-drilled it. We're going to stick this in here and see sometimes it fits, sometimes it doesn't. It's, it's the only way. I couldn't get a special head, so I had to grind them. But that fits pretty good. Now we're going to go put this back on the, on the rack, on the machine. Okay, so we've put the plate back on, we've put this on. Now we're going to take our torsion arm, or anti-rotation rod, and we're going to stick it on there with the most important again, we have to have small spacer, washer. Washer is very important. The washer, this is a press fit bearing, uh, bushing. If, if you, all the force is on the outside of this uh, knuckle here. If I did not have that, you'd be pushing on this, and the chances are you could push the bushing in and out. That's why it's important you have the washer on the top and bottom. You cannot push that bushing out. Washer, spacer, washer, washer nut. nut. Now we're going to lift this up and slide this in. This can all be done on the ground too. Okay, uh, down. Now up. Okay. Okay. Now we're going to tighten this and make sure we give it a little extra effort to make sure it's seated inside the, the socket right there. Okay. okay. Now this should be very close since we measured the other one. That's confirming that the other one was correct. But to verify it, we're gonna put it on the ground and show you again how the cardboard moves. It'll actually move out on the front and roll a little bit. And then we'll, I'll show you how to adjust the front. So now if you watch the cardboard here, this is why we do this. It's either cardboard or dirt. You're gonna watch it move because the track is settling down. There, that moved out, that moved out, okay. And then we're gonna... Now it's rested. Now we're gonna show you how to verify angle of attack. So now, this is a, a project that should be tested every year when you do your tracks. You lay a ruler across the top and we're going to measure from the cardboard down, push down on the cardboard. Look at that, it's exactly 12 inches. That's what we want. Anywhere within a quarter of an inch. But you see my rubber is a little loose here. So now I can take my rear nut here. 
I want to put a little pressure on it, not a whole bunch, okay? Because if I give it too much, it's going to raise the front and lower it. So we know that if I give it, you know, a little bit of pressure here to kind of squeeze it, it's not going to move that track much, but I want a little bit of pressure on it. There, I can still turn it kind of hard. Now I'm going to lock that. You got another crescent wrench, Steve? Then we lock nut it so it doesn't move. Okay, that's pretty tight. Now, see the spring is still loose. Okay, so now what I want to do, I want to get it to where, see I still got a little gap there, a little gap. There we go. Now I'm going to give it three turns. Now, there is a nylock on the end of this bolt here. It doesn't hurt if you give it a little bit too tight, but you want to make sure this nylock does connect to the bolt. It keeps it from backing off. So I'm basically going to keep going. There's really no pressure on the spring until the, I feel the nylock, then I'm going to quit. You still have this much room for the basic uh, the tracks to, to move. Now, a lot of people like there's a bubble right here. The bubble is a quick reference. If I were to go by the bubble, I'd have to drop this down quite a bit. That's just so you don't have to get out all the time. The tape measure and ruler are exact. So bubble it could be off. Tape measure and ruler are not. So I'm almost to the netlock. There we go, we're done. And I'm going to check one more time. 12 inches, perfect. Um, this should be done once a year. A lot of dealers don't really know, don't really do it correct. So if you get one from the dealer, it's a good idea to recheck it. Pretty simple if you get it on a cardboard. Okay, I, need, I do need to tighten these two, Steve. Okay, now, same thing with the front here. This is very, very strong. I doubt very much anybody's going to break it. If there's an issue and you hit something with these 280 horsepower razors with a stump, you're going to bend your lower control arm or you're going to bend the fixation plate or you're going to bend this. That's your fault, not mine. <laughs> Thank you for watching the video on the super uh, control arms on our, my Can-Am Defender here and the tie rod long and short tie rod and improvement that atvtracks.net has designed. Uh, we appreciate your business, Steve, myself, Willie, and Nate. Uh, we do stock a half a million dollars in parts. We ship 90% same day. Um, tracks, we're the best. Thank you for your orders and thank you for your business. We try very hard for you. Okay, the, the custom Camzo Super Torsion Arms and Long bolt, U bolt setup is available on our website under most common parts. Plus, for quick shopping, most common parts, we have a section for ATVs and UTVs.